NBC 10 Breaking News. I'm NBC 10's Francis Wang with breaking news from Center City. Philadelphia police say they have arrested two more people connected to the shooting death of a police officer last week. Mayor Jim Kenney speaking right now. Let's listen into the latest developments. Friends and colleagues of Officer Mendez and Ortiz, and I want to congratulate and thank all of our law enforcement partners in the region for the swift and coordinated effort to bring these individuals to justice. Our hearts remain with the families of the victims during this difficult time, and we will continue to work tirelessly until every person responsible for this crime is held accountable. Now I want to turn the mic over to uh, Commissioner John Stanford to provide details on the investigation. Commissioner. Good morning, or good afternoon. Uh, all the days start to run together, and the times do as well. Um, it's a bittersweet kind of moment today. Um, bitter in the fact that we wish we, we didn't have to even be here in the first place for a fallen officer, um, but sweet in knowing that uh, we have essentially taken everyone that is responsible for the shooting of Officer Ortiz and the murder of Officer Mendez in custody. Someone asked the other day, uh, what was the message for those that were responsible for this? And, and I said that we would get you, and, and we did just that. Uh, we did that thanks to the relentless work by our homicide investigators, our shooting investigation group, crime scene unit, forensics, and the amazing collaborative work with our law enforcement partners, most of which you will see here today, um, at the FBI, the ATF, the U.S. Marshals Service, uh, New Jersey State Police, Pennsylvania State Police, the District Attorney's Office, and Camden Police. I also want to thank the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 5 and Salea, the Spanish American Law Enforcement Association, for their support for the families of Officer Mendez, um, their support for Officer Ortiz, and their support for this entire department. I also want to thank all who have contributed to the reward fund, uh, which was over 275000 and again, a lot of that was um, collected by the FOP from so many donors around the city, um, but also in addition to the $20,000 uh, reward offered by the city as well as $10,000 that was contributed by city council members yesterday. I also want to thank all of the city, state, and federal officials and, and leadership for their thoughts and prayers as well as the, uh, everyone in this city and around the globe who have sent some expression of condolence um, during this, this time. I'm glad that we're able to bring some level of closure for the Mendez family as we continue to prepare for the funeral services. Um, again, just can't reiterate enough how much we appreciate the support from everyone in the city. Uh, we are making it through this time, and I'm going to turn the, the microphone over to First Deputy Frank Venor to go over all the specifics of the investigation and how we were able to uh, capture the remaining suspects. All right, good afternoon. Just to review um, what, what we talked about yesterday. Uh, on Monday, um, we uh, developed probable cause and a warrant for Yubrani Martinez Fernandez. Um, Mr. Fernandez um, was located in New Jersey in the early morning hours. Uh, he was in Cherry Hill staying at, uh, at a hotel, uh, U.S. Marshals. Uh, along with the Homicide Division and State Police, took him into custody. This morning, um, he went through the extradition process, and this morning he has been brought to the Homicide Division where he's being processed for murder. During the course of time between Monday and, and yesterday, we developed two more suspects in this case. As we told you, the original uh, decedent, we believe he had three accomplices that participated in the incident. So during that time, uh, the, the two su suspects, and I'm going I'm to give you their names, and I'll spell them if you need be later on. One is an Alexander Batista Polanco. He's 21 years of age, and he's from Camden, New Jersey. And we developed information on a Hendrick Pena Fernandez. He is from Pensacola, New Jersey. Um, those two uh, individuals um, were investigated. Uh, Polanco was found to have warrants out of New Jersey and Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yesterday, in the early morning hours, U.S. Marshals took him into custody in New Jersey and brought him uh, to New Jersey to be processed under his local charges in New Jersey, investigation by the New Jersey State Police. Um, those charges were, uh, he was processed on them, 
and some point in the evening hours yesterday, early morning hours today, he was taken to Scranton, Pennsylvania, where he faced charges for uh, a burglary that he had up there. Uh, the district attorney's office approved a warrant for murder in our case with Officer uh, Richard Mendez. So uh, he is currently uh, he being uh, transported to the homicide division to face the charges for murder today. He should be arriving shortly to the homicide division. The second individual I mentioned, uh, Hendrick Pena Fernandez, in the early morning hours this morning, we served a search warrant uh, at his residence. He was not present. Um, as investigators began to speak to people there, we became knowledgeable of where he was, and they, he was immediately taken into custody by Jersey State Police and homicide investigators. He is currently at Belmar, New Jersey, and he will be extradited back to Philadelphia to face murder charges. We also have an approved warrant for murder in that case. So all, we believe, this is our belief now, that all the individuals that were inside of that Dodge Durango the night that uh, this incident uh, happened were identified, and we believe we have them in the custody. It's not saying that we're done our investigation. We're going to keep going. There are people that assisted these individuals. There's people that tried to uh, obstruct us from finding them, and we're going to make sure um, that if charges are appropriate, that they're preferred on those individuals. After saying all that, I'm going to turn things over to the, hom the district attorney's chief of their homicide division, Joanne Pescator, who we would not have been able to do this without. She was with us around the clock on most days. Uh, so I'm going to turn things over to her and thank her. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner Venor. I just want to piggyback off of what Deputy Commissioner Venor just uh, reiterated. We would not have been able to make these arrests without our, the help from our homicide detectives are above anything. Those guys have been over there, most of them with a few hours sleep. They haven't gone home. They've eaten there. They've slept there working on this job around the clock. And I want to give our the district attorney's office's heartfelt condolences to the widow who I had to see on Friday morning while she was outside of the medical examiner's office while her husband's body was being brought out. If you've never witnessed that, it is the saddest thing you would ever see in your life. She was there with her daughter, and it's something that I hope none of you ever have to witness. That being said, there were three, three individuals who have been charged with the murder of police officer Richard Mendez and the attempted murder of police officer Raul Ortiz. Uh, the district attorney um, will be assigning this case to someone in my unit. It will probably be two individuals uh, because of the voluminous nature of the evidence in this particular case. I want to also give a shout out to the FBI, ATF, and the marshals who without their help and round the clock help in this particular case to the homicide detectives, this case would not have come in. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, on behalf of the, the city of Philadelphia, um, and particularly the members of council, I just want to say to the Mendez family, uh, our genuine and our sincere prayers and our condolences. Um, we really understand the sacrifice that is made every day um, by your family member that went out to protect us. Um, so we will be there for whatever it takes. Uh, one of our, a couple of our council members actually have a personal relationship with a fallen soldier. Uh, that's the way I feel about this in this particular environment. Uh, so we'll be there uh, to all of the law enforcement agencies, not only in the city of Philadelphia, but across the region that have participated and assisted us in this swift app apprehension of these individuals. Uh, again, thank you so much for the work you do. Um, we can't say uh, how much uh, we appreciate all you do to keep us safe. Uh, we hear on the news every night about what's going on in various countries and other parts of the world, but in the city of Philadelphia, there is no one more important than what you do and nothing more important than what you do for us there every day. So we just want to thank you all so much and tell you how much we really appreciate you all. Thank you. Uh, next up, um, my colleague, a Councilwoman, please come on up, Councilwoman Lozada. Uh, who actually was a personal friend. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have remained in, co in close contact with um, Officer Mendez's family, um, and they've asked me to share 
this statement with you this afternoon. Uh, we are relieved and grateful that progress toward justice for Richie has been made. We are thankful for the swift action that the Philadelphia Police Department took to find the, per the perpetrators. And we appreciate uh, the outpour of support through kind words and contributions that were made through the reward fund. It is amazing to see how many people have come together, not only to work this case, but to bring justice, to support one another in the aftermath of, their lo of this loss. As a family, we are grieving and are facing personal trauma through this murder, as are the officers who work with Richie. We are all processing this loss, and as we do, each officer of the 25th Police District and the airport unit, as well as across the city, continue to put their uniforms on every day and continue to protect and serve our city. We are grateful for them, for their dedication to their job, and we know that Richie would be grateful too. Even though we're experiencing hurt and anger, there is some solace in knowing justice is being carried out. As we continue to grieve, we ask for continued privacy but we want to thank everyone once again for all they have done during this extremely difficult time for our family. I'd like to mention that I received the text while coming in, um, and even though we continue to ask for everyone to please respect their, their privacy during this time, they are extremely overwhelmed, and they're asking for people to please respect their privacy, and that includes on social media as well. Thank you. At this point in time, we'll take any questions that you may have. Mr. Yes. Do you know who the questions want to follow up? First question, you said bittersweet moment, bitter and then the loss of one of your fellow brethren. And I know that that dark stripe weighs down the badge. It's sweet that you are holding those responsible. Can you just expand on that, please? I mean, bitter in a sense that we've already, um, I think earlier this week, I, I expressed that this week here, um, we have one funeral that is planned for a, a, a captain, a commander, um, died by suicide. Um, that's tomorrow. Um, we have a, a funeral on Friday for a, an officer who died suddenly, um, but was active, an active officer. And then this tragic incident occurred uh, last week, hence leading to the funeral that will be on, on Monday evening, the viewing, and then the funeral on Tuesday. Um, bitter in the sense that n none of us, the folks standing up here from our agency and from every other uh, law enforcement agency, nobody wants to be in the position where they have to talk about an officer losing their life. Um, and, and so that's the bitter, the bitter component of it. The other bitter component is that we've stood here too many times over the years um, having these same type of conversations. And, and so that's the bitter component of it. The sweet component is the fact that we, you know, were able to make an arrest as sweet as it can be. Um, it's not sweet completely. It's just it gives you some level of closure uh, in knowing that the folks that are responsible for this are in custody and they won't have the ability to do this to anybody else. They won't have a chance to um, affect somebody else's family the, the way that they're going, to, the way that their actions have affected. Um, Officer Mendez's family, as well as our family, and so um, Sweden knowing that they're off of the street, and, and so that, that's why I say that. But you know, hopefully, there are some other, as Deputy Venor alluded to, anyone else that, that had any part in this, um, regardless of how slight, we are still going to continue to pursue them as well. And, and so, I think the message has to be clear that if you do this type of, of action towards the law enforcement there are severe consequences. I mean, and, and again, it should be the same for, you know, consequences for anybody that, that's murdered. But obviously, if you have, you know, something in your mind to think that it's okay to do that to uh, law enforcement, then something's really wrong. Commissioner, do you know, do you know who the shooter is, Commissioner? Lack of cameras, lack of cameras. Uh, those that are there are 50 years old. Is that acceptable? And would more cameras prevent tragedies like this? So I don't run the airport, and so I can't explain in terms of uh, why there are cameras or why there are not cameras. Um, there are folks here today that, that are from the airport that can possibly answer that. What I will say is, I mean, listen, we talk about it all the time of, of technology. We have moved into uh, a, a time where technology and all aspects of it 
help. And so um, having cameras, having access to video, all of those type of things certainly help. They help in the means of, of maybe in some ways deterring slightly, but they also certainly help in the investigative process. With that being said, I don't know if, if you know, any amount of cameras would have stopped um, this incident because if that's something that people have in their heart to, to do that, to kill someone, um, to, to attempt to kill someone, um, they're going to do that regardless of, of cameras. And so it, it's, that's more of a societal issue that there is something wrong with folks um, beyond just, just cameras. C Question. Commissioner, do you know now who the shooter is? Do you think it's Fernandez, one of these two you've grabbed here? How, how do you think this worked? You come on up, um, come on up, Frank. And uh, again, I think with the evidence in, in terms of we're still waiting on some results from some of the ballistic evidence, um, but what we have thus far, um, DC Benor can give you. Right, as I said in the past, we believe through the evidence we've recovered, it's ballistics, that's crime scene evidence that we've now processed, that one of the accomplices fired shots. Them shots came from behind Officer Mendez, and we believe struck Officer Mendez as well as Officer Ortiz, and also one of the, uh, the defendants that wound up deceased, uh, Durant. Uh, however, I'm not gonna discuss all the evidence in the case, because now we're moving from the investigative stage to the, to the prosecution. So after this point, um, once we lay everything out, it's going to be up to the district attorney to explain um, the shooting. And we still have more investigation to do, more evidence to process and get the results from. Who is it that tried to obstruct you? Talk about this obstruction that you've talked about here. Well, I'm not going to name the people, but we had people burning a vehicle. We know that, right? We had people who helped rent hotel rooms that weren't the people staying in them. And we had people who knew where people were and didn't tell us. So between us and New Jersey, at least three of them have been charged so far. And we're going to go forward and look for more. And somebody, I'm not going to get into that because we have other people that we're looking for. Somebody, somebody rented the hotel room for Fernandez? Stand with trying to locate his gun. Is it still missing? Um, At this point, we don't. I don't have confirmation that we have found the gun. We are still searching for the gun. So that would be part of help we need. If anyone may know where that is, we still urge them to call us. Hey, Commissioner, can you talk about the relationship between the suspects that you have in custody? Were they friends? Were they part of a larger crime organization? I mean, they knew each other. It's obvious they knew each other. They they were they were part of this this theft that occurred that night. They may have been part of others. I'm not going to get too deep into that. I think that's a, a larger investigation that's going on not only here, but in New Jersey. How difficult do you think it's going to be to prosecute these individuals given the lack of surveillance footage that we have? Perhaps uh, Chief Townsend can speak to that. I'm going to defer to the DA for that. I'm very confident in this particular case in the forensics and the technology that was used. Uh, these people all knew each other. They were together. Uh, we have proof of that, so I'm very confident in this investigation. Is this a capital case, a death case in your view? That's not my decision, that's the decision of the district attorney. Well, you're a representative of the district attorney and you work in this area. Does this constitute a death case? That's the decision of the district attorney. Would you urge, would you urge him to use this as a, as a, a death case? I don't have any say in that matter. That's the ultimate decision of the district attorney. I have a question regarding the reward money. Has anyone stepped up and helped with tips and has any of that money been distributed thus far or will it be distributed? So there have been a number of tips that have come in throughout this investigation. Uh, we'll be coming through that uh, in the coming days uh, to figure out how that will be dispersed. Uh, but nothing has been dispersed as of this point. Told the assets. There were two cars that were stolen uh, recently in uh, Sherman Oaks area, driven into Wilmington in a neighborhood caught on camera. There are some rumors that those might have been these two suspects been involved with. Okay. All right. I see. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Could you say their names one more time, or uh, Eric? Could you say? Yeah, their not names? a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll put out all their names here. We'll send this out in writing too, but. Uh, all right, first, first individual, we have Hendrick. Uh, first name, it's H-E-N-D-R-I-C-K, Pena, P-E-N-A hyphen Fernandez. Fernandez, F-E-R. N-A-N-D-E-Z. He's 21 years old. We were just listening in to Philadelphia police confirming just now that two more suspects involved in the killing of Officer 
Richard He's Mendez have been found Pensalka, and arrested in New Jersey. A third suspect was already arrested earlier this week and extradited back here to Philadelphia. More arrests and charges police say could be coming for the people who tried to assist all of these suspects in evading capture. We will continue to keep you updated on NBC10.com and, of course, our NBC10 app. And we will see you back here on NBC10 News at 4.